And this is the Below Average Angler Podcast. All right, guys. Welcome back to the Below Average Angler Podcast. Today, we're going to talk about some big baits and bigger baits. And it's going to be a fun one. So thank you guys so much for staying tuned. We appreciate all of the love you guys have given our podcast. And uh, we're looking forward to growing this thing and talking more in-depth tips and tricks. I know the first few podcasts up until now have kind of been a little scattered all over the place. We want to bring some more structure to our podcast. I understand um, that that's what some of you guys have been asking for. And so we want to deliver that. So very excited to bring uh, this segment of talking big baits because that's something we're both very fascinated in. We're in a great part of the country to do so in Western North Carolina, but there's also very many other places that we've been able to apply the big baits to and see success and see failure too at the same time. Yeah, damn a lot of failure. You got you gotta you gotta make those mistakes in order to figure out how to make those successes happen. That's funny, man. Well, first of all. Happy to be doing another one. Yeah. I'm gonna keep that ball rolling. Uh, but yeah, fail in my mind with these baits, failure is the key to building success. If For that sure. sounds as weird as that sounds, yeah. it's so dead gum true because you're gonna apply them in different places and maybe not the perfect applications all the time. Mm -hmm. You're at, at one point in time, you're gonna just be going through those motions and covering water and seeing what they like. Cause that's like the, and and it's it's so much, that's like the greatest thing about the big bait yeah. is, is getting that feedback from the fish themselves. For Letting sure. the fish literally tell you where they're at and how they're living at the yeah. time, at that given time. And what and they're relating for, to, like whether it be a exactly. piece of cover, what they exactly. come off of, if it's off a point, a bluff wall, a dock, a pontoon, a wakeboard boat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more about that in a little bit. But, but like for you can you can pattern them, yeah, and and it becomes so much easier to pattern them yeah. because, like I said, they're giving you that information, and it's all at the cost of casts. Many many hundreds and hundreds of thousands of casts yeah. over who knows i, I like, can't imagine what my poor lexa and calcutta have gone through over the past <laughs> like two years of big paint fishing i mean they get all of the abuse yeah. you've got those two workhorse combos yeah. and and like we can dive into that here in a little bit because clint is set up with two like ultra ultra universal setups yeah. like both of those rods both of those combos can do a lot. Anything from I can throw a tiny clash. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. The Arashi or the Arashi glide, and he can throw everything up to a, a dead gum. You could honestly probably throw the th big heavy bull shad or the bull shad bull shad glide. I don't know how to phrase it. It's like he started making glide baits and then it just became a mouthful. Yeah, the bull glide. The Mike Buka bull, I call it a bull glide. It, yeah. it, I think that's what it's called. It comes yeah. off the tongue a lot. I just, Hope, honestly, hoping them bass are wearing red so that bull goes bam, <laughs> right to the face. <laughs> that was a corny on, dad joke. Yeah, you've been on that today, dude. On those corny but dad But honestly, jokes. like, your rods are capable of throwing really sizable baits yeah. and then really reasonable what a lot of people we know call numbers baits yeah um and that's that that cover the cover glide like you said the yeah. bullshit is a wicked sweet cover glide tight tight action and like stays close to that cover the arashi is like i mean dude dude you've schooled me on this bait. I still don't own yeah. one for myself. I think I have like, I think I still have one of yours somewhere At floating least. around. Yeah. And like, you've schooled me on this bait so many times on the back of the boat and it's just so sad because, I mean, it's sick, but like you're it's going- It's a $40 bait. Dude, you're going out there and you're getting the bites. They might be those two pounders. Yeah. And then there, there comes those six and sevens that's just like stupid. And this is one, Dude, and there's so much to talk about. It's like overwhelming. Yeah. But one thing you really school me on is these oversized hooks. Giant, go ahead. giant dude, hooks. Two let's, watt. Let's get us a close up here. You know. There we go. 
screech. So see this nice custom uh, cu Sharpie dots I've done on the back to make it look like a shad Dude, slash that. trout with these giant two aught decoy hooks. But these hooks might be a little oversized, but we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about hook size in this video and talk about why I'm throwing these oversized hooks, how they've helped, how they've hurt. Um, you can kind of see on the back of this bait, uh, my light's a little blown out here. So uh, back her up, tone down the light, and we'll figure it out. Anyway, we got some hook rash going on on the back of this thing. Healthy. But it's a $40 bait, so I'm that's not the, worried about it. My hook money. rash on my clash, Makes me want to cry. Not really. I, I want to touch on that this evening too. Okay. I really want to touch on that because I'm embarrassed about yeah. what I did to my clash. Yeah. Like truly embarrassed. And I don't want to tell anybody if I'm about to tell everybody. But you're rocking the same the same hooks on on the uh, the bull glide, and uh, that's a two aught decoy treble. Decoy makes those wicked sweet quads. But I had no idea how deadly sharp their little, their, or in this case, their wicked big treble is. I yeah. mean, it's, I love these hooks. No, they're sweet. And I stole I've never some, missed a fish on them. I stole some from you, and yeah. they immediately got gone. Yeah. You remember that day? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but it's, okay, so on the other side, so, so Clint is a big, he loves these tight to cover short cast um i like flipping like, and pitching my glide baits let's just say that heavy cover glide baits and that's where those big hooks come into play because that fish is coming hot out of cover uh doesn't have a long time to make a decision yeah but at the same time you're working that thing wicked slow yeah like super super slow you have an art to it man and i haven't I haven't figured it out for myself. Yeah. I, I don't fish a glide bait the way you do, and you have seen those that success. Like yeah. you have seen way more success on a glide than I have. So 100%. let's go into the technique a little bit. So like what I'm after when I'm throwing glides like this, whether it be the Arashi, the Bull Glide, something. So like these are two completely different baits as far as price line goes, but I'm still fishing them in the exact same way. This is a $40 bait, the, the Arashi, exact, the, exact the Bull Glide custom painted 225. Like that is the most expensive bait I still own to this day. It, it's and, badass. But it's beautiful. It, it, it's, it's great. Badass. And um, But they both work as a similar tool for me. So the Bull Shad offers a little bit bigger profile targeting that bigger size fish. And it's beautiful and looks like a a hell of a gizzard shad or a giant herring or so, something along those lines. Exactly. But then the Arashi kind of looks like everything in the lake. And I have these in so many different colors. I've been throwing this like shaddy pattern with some Sharpie dots on it because it can look like anything in that lake. I can go to a pond, I can go to I anywhere and it's gonna look like something that should be swimming in that lake. You could pass that off. Honestly, like I've seen blue perch, gill have blue a light gill. color like that. Yeah, Just perch, like blue a light, gill, shiny trout. It's got a little bit of the blue. Like it's it's nuts. It's yeah. really. So what I'm doing with these baits is, I would like to say number one cover is laydowns. So I am flipping it in the nasty of the laydowns. Would you as far into the laydowns as you can get? I think it's super important to parallel along the lay down, down the base of the tree, because that's where all the heat's held. That's where everything's held. There's so many times you go, you get hung up on a lay down, and you go to go get your bait back and you see a five pounder hovering under the base of that tree. And I, I think that fishing brush piles, especially like there's times they're not on brush, but a lot of the times they are. And the best way to find out is to go hit them with glide baits. If you don't have any action on a whole stretch of, stretch of brush, they're most likely not really on brush because you're gonna have something follow it out. So, like if they if there are fish keyed in on that brush, it doesn't matter if they're six inches long or if they're seven pounders. They're gonna show interest to where and show themselves to where you see them. Such a huge part of uh, it's such such a major part of big baiting is just the information you get. Yeah, it's you you're go. you're reading body language of a bass that you can't do with very many other baits. I mean, you think about it. How many baits do you act physically throw unless you're bed fishing in the spring that you actually see the fish before it eats? Not very many. 
top water maybe you see yeah, it blow what, up and miss what, it a couple that's times what i was about to say but you don't see the fish you don't, you don't see the physical interaction the of the body language you don't see the quality and you, like you said the body language you don't see the, how active and fast or fired up they are exactly to a given presentation no i agree like you like i have used and and honestly like i've used a big top water a lunker punker as a locating tool in muddy water yeah. where I knew I wasn't going to get a follower on a little glide bait or even yeah. a big glide bait or, or I wasn't even, I might not even have gotten um, kind of given away on a wake bait type mm -hmm. of deal. Like it was that loud chug, 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 walk, 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 like yeah. rattling noise. And I didn't catch all of them. They just gave themselves away. And I went back and picked apart those areas. They came up and slapped it, missed it. Yeah. It was ultra muddy water and and cold. So they mm. weren't nose up on the bank. Yeah. Um, and most of those fish came off of actually like the ends of docks, long, deep water laydowns. Mm. Uh, that was, yeah, yeah. So locating tool, top water does work. If you got relatively clear water, the glide bait is far superior as like a locating fish reading tool. No, for sure. And I like to think of these baits as a magnet. And so Ooh. why I say that is Ooh. you can look at the lake we were on today. We were at a very clear, deep mountain reservoir in South Carolina today. And you can throw this bait. It's 10, 15, 20 foot vis in this lake, depending on where you're at. Sometimes 30. and sometimes 30 40 <laughs> when when we haven't had any rain but we've had a lot of rain recently but you're throwing this bait and it's gliding and so when you think about a glide bait so most baits like a swim bait and a spinner bait um let's just keep it simple swim bait spinner bait they're seeing this profile of that bait the whole time so they're they're seeing this very narrow profile of this bait the whole time. Are you saying from like the tail? Yeah, so I'm saying as a bass is behind this swim bait or spinner bait. Behind or under. Behind or like under, all they're seeing is this little, little bit. Now with a glide bait, when you're gliding it back and forth, that's seven inches of profile that they're seeing versus that one inch that they're seeing with a spinner bait or a Kai Tech or something similar to that. So you're getting to show them this whole bait. So what that does is that bait gives off that flash. It shows that profile, it shows that image. So that where a fish that would have to have a spinner bait cast right down the spot in the tree that they're in, they can be in the tree way up under the log, under the brush pile and, and still come see that large profile and see this big profile and come I, all the way out to go check it out and I've see it. I honestly never actually thought about it that way exactly. Yeah. Like, the bait actually going side to side and rolling and giving, like letting the It's just the showing fish, how big the profile is. Like really letting the fish see its full size. Yeah. I'm never, instead of just one directional, yeah. like maybe, you know, it may only think it's this big when it's actually this big. Yeah. Like Cause, never cause even thought you, about that. When you look at it, I mean, it's like me and Ian. If you look at us straight on, you're like, oh, those are some kind of skinny fellers. And then, we, <laughs> then we turn to the <laughs> side and we're like, God dang, son, they drink. They, they got yeah, some they bellies on them. Beer bellies, huh? <laughs> <laughs> that gum, that's funny. <laughs> but it's all about yeah, perspective. Well, it's well, all about the angle. Hey, when we get to dancing, we, we show them all kinds of angles. All huh? the angles. Oh, so. bless their heart. And just oh, dancing like a rattle trap out there. You know? <laughs> That's so that. funny, and that goes. That goes for a crankbait. That goes for any straight retrieve lure, a yeah. paddle tail, like you said, to any kind of kite tech. Yeah. But, but like, a that's glide bait. And, and I'll tell you one thing. Another another bait that does have that drawing power that I talk about way the fuck too much, is a jerk bait. Yeah. It has that. Look at me like this. Look at me like that. I'll roll, I'll flash, I'll give off all this light. Yeah. And maybe even in sound often enough. Like, I've never but that's really, like, that's I've like never really yeah. thought about it like that. Yeah. Uh, like, those baits that show different angles yeah. have so much more drawing power. Isn't that For cool? Sure. 
We just but like then, got that little yeah. click. We just got that click. But it definitely, like, it's the same thing. Is it, like, like, if you think about it, if I'm skipping a jig under a dock, that fish has to be under that pontoon ready, like, seeing that bait come past its nose because it's such a small profile. And it, it's got to see it come past its nose and go down to it. Not your jigs. What no. jig are you talking like, about? Like, my jigs yeah. have a small profile. Yeah. Your jigs my j don't. Yeah. Old Davey I, I've Jr. Been, I've been throwing the mop jig a lot. <laughs> yeah, and we I, know. And we I know look, you throw the So mop it's jig. like a tennis ball going past it, their face. But tennis ball, more like a dead gum beach ball, volleyball. Just yeah. Dink, and it's like, whoa, dude, this yeah. mop is coming down in front of my face. Kyle Van Dever on that bass. So. Ooh, that 1099. Yeah, 1099 <laughs> that bass with that 1099 jig. <laughs> The 1099 jig, boy. Shout out to Kyle Vando. Why have I not gotten Vandy one? Hammer. Why have I not gotten one yet? I don't know. We need to get uh, some 1099 A little mad jigs. about it. A little, little bit mad. Yeah, a little, a little salty. Bit mad. Kyle, you need to send us some jigs, man. Does he make them? What was the story with that? That was funny. I 1099 remember. jigs, are, they're great. Does he make them? They're great. Does he make them? They're great. Does he make jigs? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that question. I don't think We, we actually, need to have him on the podcast to talk about that. Dude. Also... By the way, we're on episode number six. We haven't had a guest yet, but we have so many lined up. We are getting them lined up, and probably by seven or eight, you're gonna start seeing some guests flow into this podcast. So we wanted to give you guys like a good refresh, like a good starter, get to know who we no, are, right. like really try to dial in our structure a little bit, and then have some guests. And so definitely comment who you think we should have on as a guest. Um, we can do our best. Make it. Well, I think. I think most reasonable comments and suggestions, I think we are are within reach. Yeah, we, we can try to make it happen. Or sure. within attempt, how about that? Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. are within an attempt. We can always least. try. Yeah. But that's why you need to give us a lot of options in case, like, Brandon Polnick doesn't feel like being on here, even though we, we like him, he likes us. Like, I mean, he's a big guy. People pay him to do that stuff. We, we ain't got that kind of budget yet. We're getting yet. there. We're getting there, but I give him, I give him a five dollar bill and a pack of beef jerky. <laughs> it's about the yeah, best we can do right now. Hey, that Shiner stash! Shout out to the St. Stephen's area, of North Carolina Shiner stash. That's some good beef jerky. I'm gonna swing by there though in a couple of days. You should be like, hey, we. We shout out your shit. <laughs> yeah. We shout you out on our podcast. Where's our money and oh, or, and or jerky? No, I would take product all day from them bad boys. Oh, yeah. I love and and just I just have it sprawled out. Oh, like, yeah. We'd be laying we'd have under a, piles, a mound of jerky. Under piles of jerky and I'd like, sleep on it. I'd pack my pillowcase full with it. You know it's the best. It probably smell good. You know it's the best. I've got some in the I've got some in the boat or yeah. in my dry bag right now. It's so yeah. dead gum good. I'll have to add some after the show. It will legit keep you alive on the yeah. water. Like you're like I'm about to die. I'm so hungry. And it's yeah. like Shiner Stash, mm. beef jerky. Good to know. Hickory, Shout North, out Car Sh Shiner Hickory Stash. North Carolina. Hickory, North Carolina. Springs stuff. Road, North. Golly bum. All right, I'm done. I'm Golly. done with my. I'm done with my free plug. Yeah. <laughs> yep. We're, uh, yeah, stop. Every every word you say, that's a penny taken off our tolls here. Ouch. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, all right, so on the topic of big baits, we talked about hooks a little bit, and we want to get deeper into that because we've experienced some hook size issues today. Yeah, today specifically. And, like, with that issue, I'm going to go dive into, like, the opposite end okay. of... um of the big bait deal or i should say of the single joint glide bait deal yeah. because honestly there's so many categories now and i'm not even going to touch on it but i am talking about like single jointed glide baits larger bait fish imitation type things and like one of the most popular ones i think that people got their hands on right now maybe not popular but definitely popular well, well, in our well, area. No, well known yeah. well known for trout eating bass is the hinkle and I, I actually still got it tied up to the combo but so this is like one of the bigger ones for true trout fed fisheries 
this is kind of what you're after. It's either this or Adepts 250. Yeah. And I mean, there are hundreds of dudes, like literally just guys making trout imitation glide baits. Yeah. There's hundreds of them. Like, pick one. Go on Instagram. Go on swim bait underground. Type in or, custom swim bait on Instagram. Or you know. eBay, like yeah. Jiminy Christmas. Like, but this is kind of the bread and butter, right? Like old mm -hmm. school, like proven shit. Yeah. And uh, so I got this one for a decent price on swim bait underground. And it was actually like one of the newer uh, molded joint type things. And so the originals, honestly, were very close to my rigged up kind of joint yeah. connection, which is wire on wire. And uh, they were they had like buffers, I think. I don't know. I've heard people talk different things. But they had like buffers on the joint to make it quieter yeah. when it, so it wouldn't tick. This one actually doesn't tick too hard. But so it watch it spray water. Huh? It just, is it still wet? It just definitely sprayed water on my foot. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, it got it got uh, a couple of bites today, which was cool. A couple of bites on a bait like this. It got a couple of bites today. It's like, like look how big. Let's let's compare. This is a seven and three quarter inch swim bait. I think this is eleven and a half. And this is what I consider how a much? fairly a good size bait. What does that weigh? I don't know. <laughs> I never yes. pay attention to the weights. Two and a half, three ounces. I'd say an ounce and a half to two ounces. No There's more, no, no more than two ounces. Really? All right, okay. let's call that two. You gonna right. look it up? All right. Yep. I know how much this weighs. I've weighed it. This weighs fifteen ounces. <laughs> it weighs fifteen ounces, and um, it's it's the it's the shit, honestly. Like it's got a wicked wide glide. Um, I can get three this. and one eighth ounce. I knew it was a three ounce. I bait. was definitely wrong. It sinks. It sinks pretty good. It, it sinks very slow. But not this. Not I, it doesn't sink as slow as this. No, it doesn't. But it's like a way faster than that. I bet you that. I bet you that falls a foot every. I can't believe this thing is three ounces. I knew it was. It had to be. I thrown it on Rod's weight, rated up to like half an ounce. Really? No. I believe no. it. I mean, I believe. I've it. definitely thrown it on underpowered rods for this bait. No, it's it's definitely a rod you don't have to have a dedicated swim bait rod to throw there, or it's a bait you don't have to have that for sure. But this, like, I have a dead pretty much. I've thrown I've thrown a two fifty on this rod, and we'll get into this this combo because I fucking love this combo but honestly i bought this combo for this bait like i have a dedicated combo pretty much for this bait and i have one of them it's that heavy it's that it's it's just got that it's that niche it, it's that you know <laughs> <laughs> it's that niche bait it's got that i mean it is pretty niche yeah niche niche niche, Ni niche. I, don't, I don't know how to say i it. think niche is probably the correct term it's probably the most asshole way to say it also niche all right let's dive i want i do want to dive a little bit more into something i'm actually kind of like like it drives me crazy because all right People spend all, it's a huge range. I think retail 175, but people spend all kinds of crazy shit on, on these. So like you said, what, $39, yep. 40? And it comes with something that's huge, swiveling. And I, I think we've talked about swiveling hook hangers on a this. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, because the bull, the bullshit comes with that shit. Yeah. This doesn't, which drives me nuts for the price yeah. of these. But Flash nine does not. It's crazy. This does, and all that means is the hook hanger rotates, a uh, rotates with the bait or around the bait. I don't know how to say it. It rotates with the bait, so it yeah. it moves. So these hook hangers are kind of independent. This bait also comes with that, but for a, a very higher price. And honestly, very higher price. They. They're so much stickier. Like, do you see me trying to turn yeah. it? Yeah. And they're kind of like gooey yeah. feeling because like the resin or whatever. But 
I can get this thing to glide, what, six, seven, six eight foot? foot? At least, yeah. From side to side on, like, depending on how I turn the handle, it's, it's nuts. So the difference, like you were saying, yeah. you like to flip and pitch and, like, you know. get in the heavy cover yeah. with your glides. My and smaller that is, glides, that's what I'm doing. And that is, like, the purpose of those cover glides. Yep. I... This thing, I don't, like, it has, it doesn't even matter. I'll throw this out in the middle of 60 foot, and just that size yeah. and that wide glide has that drawing power, and, like. But when you think about that, so you've got a 11-inch bait, 12-inch bait? I think it's 11 and a half. I don't know. Okay. Let's call it a 12-inch bait, basically. I think it is. So you've got a 12-inch bait, but not only do you have 12 inches of that side profile that those bass are seeing, it's gliding six foot. So that is almost a six foot presentation this way and a six foot presentation that way. Like directional change. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Which and is then huge. that is just zigzagging in the peripheral vision of these largemouth bass and their lateral line. And they are seeing this from so far that away. That is a big point that you just made their lateral yeah. line. That type of motion. Yeah. So you're causing disturbance in six foot of water with this bait. People really don't think about that. No. I'm surprised you did. <laughs> I'm surprised I did too. I'm really surprised. It might be. Hanging out with me too much. Yeah. <laughs> no, you, no you, know, you know what it's all about. Because it's like, this is, the, the size of this bait alone, and these two, these also do the exact same thing. Yeah literally displaces water as you're moving them through that column. Yeah. And like... In an irregular slash regular... And so it's irregular in the fact that it's not one bait hitting the water, buzzing in a straight line back to the boat. It's irregular in the fact that it's going back and forth and back and forth, but I guess the regular motion is it's continuously making that glide. But it is continuously changing direction yep but at the at what i guess the difference between a bait like this and a bait like this is the frequency in which it changes direction very true because this bait does glides matter? three feet that bait glides six feet I couldn't get mine when I had it to glide three feet but you have done good things with that bait I like what you do. But that's that. the thing. Like, this thing can do three glides in the time you do one. Or... At least that. Yeah. At least that. Um, and, and that's okay. That frequency that, that I just mentioned I want to talk about here. Let's with, do it. With a bait that I've been playing with a lot here lately. Excuse me. Slinging rod sleeves off here. We just pulled these off the boat. <laughs> Or not so it, when when I talked about that that frequency of glide, now you like to work your DRT Clash Nine with a bill. You yeah. like the crank down mode with the tail and whatever the hell. Just uh, caught my first fish with the Clash Nine woo. yesterday. Woo! Yes, Pop sir. up a picture of that bitch. Awesome, awesome fish. Like it, we were just kind of we were again that mode of going through the motions yeah. like just cast cast eventually we'll get a bite yeah. and sure enough it's like i'm thinking about my own thing up here and all of a sudden i hear oh oh and i turn around and there's a fish on the front deck and glint sitting on the back yeah and i'm he's like flopping and it just threw this bait out of its mouth and i'm like Oh, cool. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. cool. And I go and I'm like, don't go back in the water there, yeah, buddy. You yeah. almost boat flipped it. Yeah, I almost boat flipped it through the boat. Through, it, it like yeah. skidded the carpet and almost went out. Almost, and, almost. Yeah, it almost it. didn't get a. Dude, I want to touch on the color of this too. I'm like yeah. so fired up on this here lately because it, it's just been so good. But And obviously, you guys can see why it's hard to keep us like <laughs> straight because there's so much to talk about. There's so much going on. We'll so we're trying to. We're trying to keep it as segmented it as tough. possible, but it's very tough. But okay, hang so with it. I want to hang with this. That frequency of glide, like that, just kind of made me think about something. And this open water deal, where the the bass are feeling this, and this is gonna sound weird. This whoosh, 
whoosh, like this long, uh, easy, slow type methodical thing. Yeah. And then the way I work this clash, um, I work my clashes, I almost, one, I almost always glide them. Um, I rarely put the bill in them unless I'm just trying to be funky. Um, but that frequency of this thing is just, you can't work it slow. It, the, I, I work it stock pretty much. I've got a little bit of added weight with the split rings and a little bit of oversized hooks. But, uh, I mean, it floats, so it only dives down when you work it. Yeah. Which presents its own challenges. Being, you can't work it the same way you work this Arashi. No. You have whooped my ass on this Arashi <laughs> on days where I have had this glued in my hand. And, and he's ripping it through the water column. Well, but I'm working it as slow as possible while still keeping it in the water column. Yeah. And it's like, it's... So this is, in my mind, this is like a Zara spook. This is like a dad gum. It's like a subsurface. A 10 XD. I mean, <laughs> can maybe not 10, a 5 XD. No, so I'm talking about like, it's a topwater bait to me. It's a walking bait. Or, yeah, yeah. That, no. In a big your, fluke. No, in your mind, this is your 6 XD. That's my, yeah. Okay. Or, or your DT6, DT6 rather. Yeah. Your, this is your DT6. Yep. Which, dude, all the which, fucking. Which, check out that trout color. Let's talk about that real quick. Because I know Ian I can't, jealous. I can't talk about it I real get, quick. I that get, that color is absolutely <laughs> stank nasty dirty. She is. I've only, I've only seen a couple of those on eBay. Um, Shout out Dustin Hurley, swim bait everything on uh, Instagram. What's up, Dustin? Hook you me better, up. You better be watching. Better be watching. This. Ah, yeah, those hooks cool. are still sharp, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Farts. Really? Uh, Did you fine. really get yourself real good? Oh yeah, pretty good. <laughs> Down in the thumbular. Um, the thumbular. All right. Oh fuck, that's funny. Fudge sickles. Ow, I just got mine a little bit. Yeah. But Hooks. where are we at? We're talking about like that frequency. Yeah. I I'm I'm hung up on it because it's like they feel those little glides. Yeah. And I guess you just kind of it's just that deal of getting that feedback and dialing it in. Yeah. And th and that's one thing we do. We don't just go out with one swim bait rod and one arashi glide. Or one swim bait rod and one clash, we can get in that little funk where we only want to throw one. But the thing is, I can go through the Arashi for an hour or two and not see any results, pick up a clash rod, and then boom, 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 boom. It's like that's what the presentation they want. Or it's the other way around, or you do both and you just, it's not it. And that happens, and that that happens, happens a lot. plenty, and that's okay. That's yeah. fine. Um, it's like, it's just about locating them yeah. and giving them something they want, which is tough. Yeah. Because we've both had limited success with these specifically, but it's almost like we, we know their potential. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like I've, I've been fishing a lot of baits recently where I'm, I personally have not had the success but I've seen the success so much. The cast bait being one of them. The cast OG herring, I think is a phenomenal bait. I think it looks juicy. I think it looks really good. And up until last week on Lake Lanier, I did not see success in that bait. And I fished it for the past two months. I, I can But say. then I rip it and get this four pound largemouth that just clobber it and land that fish on this bait and then it's like boom that changes and that's what's going to change for you guys so like that's what we want this podcast to be about like yeah we like to throw big swim baits i feel like we're a little more experienced than some average joe, average joe yeah. with, with a big swim a bait bit. but what we want you to understand no average anglers yeah all right but what would you what we want you guys to understand is you can go to the store right now and pick up a 40 dollar arashi glide bait 
and do just as good as if you buy a Hinkle Trout or a Clash 9 or something like that. This is what got me started. This and the S waiver is what got me started. Wow, the S waiver's so old. Yeah. But it doesn't take, like, you don't have to have all of the best gear, all of the best everything. No, you don't. You can go start like we did with, I, I had a Berkeley lightning rod extra heavy and some bullshit reel that I was throwing a six inch live target soft knockoff Huddleston, sorry, live target, and caught my PB smallmouth to this day on that setup. 492. That's so cool. That's so cool. And, and that's not I, even I, huge. That's I not that, that, I mean, it's a big small mouth, but. It's a big smallie. It's a big smallie. But it's still not like giant. No. When all these guys are catching but, seven I pounders mean, it's up a, north. It's a really cool, dude, that's a big North Carolina small mouth. It's yeah. so cool. I, and I'm, I've, I've still been chasing that big smallie. I yeah. still haven't found it. My PB is still uh, 313, three pounds, 13 ounces. Which is like, damn. And on the about on the same spot you caught yours. Yeah. Just about, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. That's cool. That I think that that shit's cool to me. But was yours you, on the rock? It was like in between lay downs on that Nico rig. Gotcha. It was like in between them. I just hmm. cast it up on the bank and uh it was just kinda like a lost could not find the weight of the lure and just started burning it that Nico rig and just caught up with it it's kind of coming at us and remember how fast I kind of fought it like a swim bait fish was that I, there? I wasn't there that's still my PB and it wasn't even that big it was I, like a good I, one I, I never realized that was your PB it's my PB small now huh though even the one from them St. Lawrence wasn't yours was a 410 and mine was a 3.6 yeah. out of the St. Lawrence. Here's the only a 3.6? Yeah, that big and that fought like that. I guess mine was actually a 4.13. Because your scale's three ounces light. Holy fuck, yeah. So yours was a 3.9. Yeah, still not a PB. So maybe my PB might be a 3. Maybe my PB is a 4 pounder. If it's 3.13. Yeah. Four still. Or whatever. All right, guys. Welcome back. We just got into a long tangent about PVs <laughs> that uh, was a little off track. So let's get back on track. So we were talking about hook sizes and different things and the water displacement with these large swim baits. Um, let's get into the problem we ran into today with hook size. All right, Dadgum. I went on a rant earlier and I got hot. I got heated. I got fired up about hook size because... Let's be honest, okay, it sucks, the truth sucks. I've thrown this bait for years now, and I've yet to catch a fish on it. But, <laughs> this sucks to say, I've gotten so many bites on this bait. Yeah. I've gotten so many bites, but I'm like stubborn, and I want it to look very natural. And I fish, I think these are one out hooks. I've got on this bait. One aught on a 11 inch, 12 inch bait. Where I've got two aughts on my seven inch bait. So literally a size up hook on a bait that's almost half as uh, half the size. Yep. Like, and I like I've said, I've so it's a trade off. It really is a trade off. You get more bites looking natural with smaller hooks, but obviously that trade off hasn't paid paid off for me where we live yeah apparently apparently you need a bigger hook because these fish something about them they're either coming in and hitting it in the middle or they are they are headshotting this thing and completely yeah. completely missing the hook yeah. i mean i don't think the fish today headshotted it i think he kind of Came in and hit it, it mouth really closed. Just punched it in the side, yeah. But I got, I got three. I, the same fish hit this thing three times. The first one, I reacted and jerked it away, but it hit it two more times after that. Yeah. And I mean, these are. And it was not a small. These fish. are fresh, st thirty sixes one on like, 
Like, I can touch any point on them. Like, I haven't snacked. Like, they are dirty. Dirty. Like, you're watching me, like, getting snagged, touching them. They're yeah. dirty, dirty sharp. And fuck me. Like, I can't not get... I can't, not Not one fish in the boat on that bait. Hit after hit after hit throughout, you know, on multiple different fisheries up here. Yeah. But, so, this thing, I kind of follow the same <laughs> mindset. I fish smaller hooks on this thing until I bent the front one out or I placed it with a, the same hook that's on that thing. Um, but right here is a size one. And the size one worked to catch two fish, which is cool. At the same time. On the, the same, same time. Bait. Um, You want me to just touch on like what combos I'm throwing these on real yeah. quick? Yeah, let's talk about some rods and reels. Like, so we Clint. Talk, talked about mine earlier. A little, well, we didn't talk about. Okay, I, I can exactly. tell you right now. I, I love your rods. You've got matching Kage's, right? Yep. Two the Iowa Kage rods. They're 200 bucks. And they're great fucking rods. Yeah. Like, like I said, you can throw such a wide variety of baits yeah. on those things. They're rated up to eight ounces. I mean, you can. And they're rated yeah. down to two. Yeah. Which is like that's that's so where I can throw my Arashi on the them meat of can, your baits yeah. are coming in at is that is that two and a half to four ounce range, the the clash being four, this being three, like, and that's like you know you're smaller cup like yeah you're covered yeah. And you've got two of them, and you've got two different reels. Mm -hmm. The Lexa in a seven, seven to one. Yep. And the Calcutta in a six to one. Yep. You're set. And they're they're very they're very similar. They serve their own pur purpose. One's right handed, one's left handed. Perfect. And my left handed Lexa has the big power handle, so I like to use that for my little bit faster baits when I'm working the clash. Or the Arashi. Um, now, when it comes to like a Huddleston, like an eight-inch Huddleston, I would rather have my Calcutta for that because it's a little bit slower. I can creep it faster. Bread and butter. And that hook set on my right side is a little I, stronger. I like how you said I can creep it faster. Like that's like dirty. I can be creepy faster. <laughs> yeah. Not only do I roll up with the, in a white band, but it's got like. Spare tires all around. Damn straight. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so, okay. Um, for my smaller baits, I've got, I've got a little bit of variety in swim bait rods. I don't have, I, I don't have one that's the same. But uh, this has been, like, my bread and butter lately for the Clash. And small wake baits, crank downs. What else do I throw on this? So the toxic baits crank down. I throw the clash on this. I've thrown a eight inch bull shad on this with some success. What else do I throw on this? I throw that ABT. I, this is just like, okay, I'll go ahead and tell you. So this is a seven foot nine Daiwa Tatula swim bait rod. It's rated for 15 to 30 pound test. I have 22 pound mono on here right now. Maximum six ounces. So throw a Huddleston on if you wanted. You could throw a Depths 2. Nah, it might be a little overkill, but you probably could do it. You could get away with a Depths 250 on this thing. And so and it's got a nice moderate fast action, which your eight footers do too. Your eight yeah. footers have a wonderful parabolic action and like that's perfect for the trebs and it's perfect for the the big j hook baits and it works great for even like the ewg style baits like exactly. the, the big the big weeds or snagless version yeah. baits big kai tech like, citizen all that exactly like i said like you've got that workhorse and i just like i just like kind of like these niche rods like I just like to mess around with them, have fun, have fun with them. So like, this is that little seven nine, and I've got it paired up with a Daiwa Tatula Zillion fifteen twenty, something like that. It's in a seven three to one, dude. This reel is just dirty. eBay and it was really crunchy, like. 
bad crunchy. And I took it to the tackle trap and they hooked it up and cleaned it real nice. And it's, it's, it's one of my favorite reels that I own. Okay. And like on the other, on literally the complete opposite spectrum. Whoa. Also a wicked sweet, a uh, big lunker punker rod. That's kind of why I bought it, but I found a lot more uses for it than that. But on the other end of the spectrum, I don't even know if I can get it into frame without taking down old Bucky. <laughs> okay. Jiminy Christmas. Hold this for me. Yep. <laughs> this is a pretty good problem to have. Yeah. This oh, is a... Whoa, 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 whoa. Your line's hooked on that glide bait. All right, we're going to... Back your... Back your... Hold board. on. I got you. I'm going to snip the hink. Oh. I'm you, snip... You did, whoa. <laughs> now your line's in that glide bait up there. The line's in the bait? It's All right. in the hook. We're done. We're done. Nine foot. <laughs> Dobbins 908. Uh, it's like an ultra mag heavy, badass swim bait rod. Eight to 20 ounces. Oh my God. Yeah. It's like I didn't low. I it up to 20. Holy shit. Low end. Fuck, this thing is long. I don't know what to do with all of this rod that's what he said welcome to my life right and that's so tangled up there jiminy christmas okay it's the sweetest rod of all time for these giant hard baits and soft baits like just like 10 inch minimum like it'll throw down to a depth 250 people have thrown a hood on it but it's like not not my thing for a hood but it's like perfect for this and it honestly throws a depth 250 great which Depth 250 weighs 6.2 ounces, something like that, and it's like, cast it just fine. Cast it like it's a Sanko. My old Sanko out there just flicking it. Skipping the Sanko. That's right, Sanko. that's right, that's right. Um, I, I mean, dude, I, I can't say enough good things about that stick. It's just, it loads up. It's not a complete broomstick. For being yeah. rated for 20 ounces, um, like just the weight of this thing at 15 Keeps it loaded nice under the weight and just kind of flicks it out there. A little bit of a lob. Uh, you can overhand it for sure, but so much weight. But, and I've caught, I think I've only caught spotted bass on that ride. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. But good ones though. So, And I've got that paired up with. I've got to be able to show the reel. The reel's the coolest thing about it. Why don't right you get fire. that thing untangled? I'm going to get it untangled. While he's doing that, I'm going to swap batteries in the camera. Woo. We'll sweat. Stay tuned. Fire that cricket. All right. Okay, you got your rod out? I'm ready. All right. Let's so, uh, like, I want to talk about the reel because it. I bought it for more of a nostalgia thing. Cause I'm just like that. I'm weird yeah. like that. Um, so kind of like an old school deal was like the shout, the shall, the Shimano Calcutta TEs, uh, 400s. And for this giant rod, I wanted, I wanted a big reel, something that was just big in the hand yeah. and just kind of robust. And if you could see the gear case on this thing. It's absolutely giant. I mean, right there is the gears. Yeah. And it's like almost, it feels like almost three inches. I know it's not. But it's just a super overbuilt yeah, big reel. Pro, big profile. Big, almost like but saltwater it, it reel. It feels so strong. It feels like you've got some meat. And when you're throwing a bait that weighs almost a pound, you want that strength. You want that like backup. To know that you've got... 100%. Yeah. And, and so another huge thing with this is the low gear ratio. This is a 5 to 1 gear ratio. Yep. So these giant baits, they're going to cause a lot of drag in the water, a lot of resistance. And with that low gear ratio, it's non-existent. Yeah. And I, that's another reason I love this thing. Oh, for sure. Like I said, it's just super overbuilt. Yeah. But then you think about it with with a glide bait when you're going side to side so and you have a little bit slower of a gear ratio. I know I throw mine on a seven to one, and but I like those tight 
cover glides where I'm making it go faster, but on a big open water glide bait like that, this you're thing. staying in the strike zone longer with a slower gear ratio. The longer you're in that strike zone, the longer they have to see it, the more time they have to catch up to it, sniff it, eat it. Sniff it. That's what I want to do. Sniff it and eat it. Especially when I put that juice on there. Yeah, it's all about putting that juicy juice Honestly, on Honestly, I did not juice this thing up today, which it could have benefit as many sniffers that I as I had today. It could have been. You probably had, what, seven, seven to ten bass, like, hot on it today? That had the capability of eating it, yeah. Yeah. Uh, ones that were, like, catchable, um, like fun i would call fun sized fish yeah 20 followers i bet i had today yeah on that on that ultra clear water lake uh it's like an aquarium you a bait this size is gonna draw them out and you're gonna get to see them and 90 percent of them nah 80 percent of them were three pounds and under yeah but there was a couple that were like Oh, we need to go back and fish these areas because it's a high it's a high percentage area. When you locate a fish of that magnitude, that's where they live. Yeah. Like that's where you're best off fishing. And it's and yeah, you you want to come back and hit them with the big bait, it's big fish bait. Like it's just that simple. It, it it's not that complicated to to put it together and just try to try to get a big and. But it gets it gets that way sometimes just because it's hard. You go back to where you get a follower and he don't follow it no more. He doesn't he's seen it, you know, he's yeah. he's conditioned and it's that's where it gets tough. That's where a mental game it's like, man, did, he's is he done with, with my stuff, yeah. you know? What do you think? Is it, he it, it's if crazy. you get that follower and go back, is he done with your stuff? Is he just is he off off the rocker? Is he off the game? I, I can't say that I've had a situation to where I've been able to go back off a glide bait follower and catch that fish on a glide bait. But I have had where I found them on a glide bait, whether it be practice for a tournament or things of that nature, where I see them one day and I come back the next day and that same fish is still there, but I don't catch them on a glide bait. I'll know that fish was there, pitch a jig or something a little slower of a presentation, a swim bait, something a little bit different, a little bit smaller that I know they can commit to and been able to capitalize on thinking that fish was there by seeing that fish the day previous or two days previous, going back to that same area, catching the same fish that I saw. And it can be, it can be skewed. Like it might not be the same fish, but it's, a very similar fish or similar caliber yeah, of fish. similar caliber for sure and i've had success with that especially practicing for tournaments i think a glide bait is a great presentation because not only are you locating the fish you're locating the right size of fish most of the time with glide bait you're locating the right size but you're locating what they're relating to which is huge whether it be a follower off of a dock that you go back to in that tournament maybe they're relating to that dock because it's a little bit deeper or it has a pontoon boat instead of a, a wake boat or if it has a wake boat instead of a pontoon boat there's so many different features of cover and why these fish are relating but if you can identify where they were relating to and go back to that tournament typically I feel like if you're within three to five days of when you first saw that fish, they're still going to be in that same general area related to the same good. general cover. That's a really good tight timeline. Like, yeah. like that three to five days, unless some freak weather rolls through, yeah. they're typically going to be... Or if you're in a tidal in, fishery where it's constantly changing. I've, I haven't experienced that personally. Yeah. I, haven't, I haven't been in that situation. But holy crap that makes a ton of sense yeah like that three to five days they're in and, and you have my opinion is that it skyrockets your confidence to sure. say this is the area i need to be in i need to slow down and pick it apart yeah. like you could fish a lake like we fished today we fished three different creek arms 
And in those three different creek arms, one of them, we had 20 to 30 followers. The other two, we had none. So we were locating which creek arm had these fish. So in that tournament, if we were to fish a tournament there tomorrow or in the next three to five days, we would go back to that one creek arm and be fishing it with a little bit different of baits, trying to key in on these fish. Whereas if I wish I, I could say that I didn't the same practice. damn thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean we we throw them I big the same dad gum thing. Yeah. <laughs> but but it helps you dial into an area, see what those fish are keying in on, why they're keying in on it, and what they're doing. Uh oh. So oh, it's twisty. It's gonna. I ain't that high class, bud. But, uh, okay, so we've talked about hook size, where we think it could have been improved to get that I, hook up. I really didn't, I, I really didn't uh, even really touch on that. Let's talk about it. Touch on it real quick. Like we were saying, I fished these, maybe I did, I fished these one aughts on here right now. It's a big bait. Came with four aughts on it. That's what it comes stocked with, these really? giant, ugly, I mean, they're ugly, they're sharp. I'm sure they've caught them before. I mean, they're yeah. gaffs of treble hooks, yeah. the size of your hand. Uh, but I just feel like that natural presentation gets you the bites, but apparently it doesn't get you the hookup. So, and like I said, I've gotten I've gotten many many bites on this bait exactly. I haven't caught one on it yet. Yeah. So I, when I get home, on all of my big glides they're all getting two watts yeah they're all getting two watts Beef every dead gum one of them and, there's and, no reason and I to feel not like, there's no. no reason to and not. I feel like once you find point, that that bait is getting the interactions but not the success then there's a factor that needs to be changed now you're 100%. still gonna have these situations where you make a change because you feel like it's the right change but you still have the drawbacks. So with this Arashi Glide, it I think it comes with one aughts, which is crazy that this three ounce baits comes with one aughts, and that's 15 ounce. Well, it doesn't come with one aughts, but you're fishing one aughts on it. Yeah. But a drawback to having these bigger hooks is this bait isn't built for the bigger hooks. So this hook will get hung up over here. You can see where I've got so much hook rash to where this bait will hang up like this, get fouled up and deal I haven't even that. really considered that much but you're right you do have yeah. hook rash on the top of the back yeah from where where it, it's gotten hung up if it if it gets in a if it gets folded up and if you have a bait swimming like that with this back hook up here it's not really going to do much on that they have to headshot it or you're not getting that fish in the boat so that's one thing you have to consider is the drawbacks of things like this is not perfect Another drawback to having bigger hooks is that's more surface area of the water those hooks are taking up to snag on branches, logs, ropes, whatever. So when you're swimming it by that tight cover, flipping and pitching it like I like to do, I'm more susceptible to hook into things like that. But that's a risk I'm willing to take if I know that my hookup ratio is going to go up. It does. And so yeah you have to worry about that that's, that's one of the things that you have to worry about and when you you're do, upgrading your hook size you do snag you do snag yeah. a good bit i get snagged but i am a firm believer jason ash told me this when he was throwing a rat a handmade rat into a bunch of trees i was like oh my god like that thing's like 60 bucks and you're throwing it into that nasty tree and he's like high risk high reward so it's high risk when I want to throw this big bait, $40 bait, $225 bait, in near a tree, near a rock. We've all smacked them on docks, smacked them on rocks, smacked them on trees, got them up high in trees. I did it today. I'm sure you can see that and perfectly fine on there. You had yeah. that high risk of damaging these baits, losing these baits, breaking off these baits, scuffing them up, you have that high risk, but if you're not putting them in the places they need to be in, you're not going to have that high reward of catching the fish that Preach. comes with throwing a big bait. Preach. You're 100% right. 100% right. I couldn't agree with you more. Like, if you're throwing a little glide bait like that in open water, your success, your 
your outcome is diminished. Yeah. Uh, I kind of a good transition. I think what you just talked about. They're gonna get scuffed up. They're gonna get rashed up. They're yep. gonna get teeth marks on them. This and that and this. And you mentioned earlier on the podcast, it kills you how bad your high dollar clash gets hook rash on yeah. it. Yeah. Killed me too. And, and it's already getting it. It's already got it. It looks, it's going to look good. Like I am crash is just like it's break, just breaking more up realism. that pattern. Yeah. Breaking up that pattern. Yeah. However, However, I did something really, really lame, but it's honestly a little cool. Just that it's even an option. And there's no way it's coming up on camera, but I got this. Can't remember the name of the, uh, can't remember the, name of the company. A I wish. Tempered glass screen protector. It's literally a tempered glass screen protector for your baits. And the one that I ordered specifically is built for the clash it's the only one they make like bait specific but i guess it's such a popular bait it literally like goes around the gill you see it yeah. like going around the gill and follows the lateral line back and it's like a thick it's basically it's, like thick scotch tape like packaging tape yeah it's like a thick tape and it's on the back too and it just it gets hook rashed and your bait doesn't have to and it's like super lame but honestly 9.99 for like you peel it off and then you got like a non hook rashed bait and then you like i don't know i feel like it just extended the life of my bait and i have put this thing on some docks honestly this isn't where the thing is i look at that that was probably on linear that day yeah. i really got a hold of that um and I'm not mad about it. Like, I think it'll look better once it's rashed up, but I feel like I just got a little bit more life out of it. I mean, and yours so, looks cleaner than mine at this point. But I got this on eBay. Yeah. You got this from a DRT dealer. Yeah. Was your Did your price start with a one? Yep. Mine didn't. Yep. Mine started with a two. <laughs> so, like, and, and so I'm not you, talking shit. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, like, I'm so glad that these are starting to become real retail price instead of the, what yeah. would you call it when it's like overpriced what would you call that just the the high demand and the low supply yeah right? like so they, that's where i bought this pro blue model uh at i think after shipping and tax i would call it 240 245 yeah and it's like and it's the same bait a little slightly different color 135 different date of purchase 135 yeah a year apart no no three months apart three months four apart. months apart yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 but like dude that is like a wicked sweet like this is an awesome color it really mimics like any type of gizzard shad herring yeah as we like to say herring um, herringe. herringe we like the Ozzy Osbourne and the herringe. <laughs> herringe and this is like every trout low light condition but like blue gilly it's a dark shadow profile that's what I like about it yours is very squeaky yeah it needs is my squeaky? 40. hold on let's see him. there's that squeak I feel like it's not that squeaky in the water. Maybe it is. I don't know. Fuck them. But this is like, this is one of those high frequency baits. Yeah. We were talking about a minute ago when these bigger and like even this, this isn't a high frequency bait. Oh my God. Speaking of high frequency, have we talked about this yet? No, I don't think so. Touch on this. This is like the, your new deal. And I really want to see you have great success on this. thing. So I have not even tied this bait on yet. Uh, this guy that paints them. Can't remember your name right now, but I could drop it below. Um, he had a, like a blemish model, and that was this. And it's not quite a clash, but it's damn close. And would you uh, call it? Would you call it a bit of a off-brand, yeah, um, clone uh, type thing? Yeah, clone ash. 
Um, <laughs> but clone ash. Clone ash. <laughs> the clone ash. Tiny. <laughs> the tiny clone ash. Tiny clone ash. I and uh, I don't even know what I would, like. I always thought it would look more like a crappy, and then with the orange and the chartreuse. I think it's more of like that green sunfish type. Green sunfish, war mouth, red ear sunfish, or people call them um, pumpkin seed perch. Yeah. Uh, they have exploded in my lake back home. Yeah. I would really love to see you uh, come on the Catawba River in the spring with that thing. Yeah. And absolutely annihilate everything. Like, yeah. That is such a dirty, dirty, dirty bait. If it has any action whatsoever that <laughs> that thing it's about to not <laughs> yeah i hear you it's that thing's just nasty like it's the same here let's do it like we haven't even done this yet here did i just break it did you break the lip hang on look at the lip did you break it i hope not there you go look let me look here turn it towards me a little bit It's, I can't tell the difference. I'll tell you one difference real quick that I noticed. Wait a minute. No, nope. I don't have I, swiveling hook hangers, do you? No. no. No, this bait does not come with swiveling hook hangers, which is like insane that it doesn't. It's nuts that this bait doesn't have swiveling hook hangers like this $40 option does. Yeah. This is, this is revolutionary big bait hard bait stuff right yeah. here for the price point for the price point it's been done but not for this price point yeah how long has that bait been out now two years i want to say four really I'm trying to think of, like brandon polinick throwing it up north this bait's been out it can't be that long four years i need uh, to i want to say like 2017 and 2018 I believe uh, 20. Debuted. No way. What? Oh, that's talking about an album. Okay. I was like, there's no way it was December of 2020. No. Um, did you know Arashi or Rapala brought, bought Storm? Did not know that. <sighs> yes, I do know that. Because they call the original Storm Wiggle Warts pre Rapala Wiggle Warts. Wiggle, wiggle warts. So it's got a rate of fall of 0.4 foot per second. Hold on, let's do the conversion on that. 0. 0.4. 40%. So four foot, foot, four foot every 10 seconds makes an ROF four. Yep, that's what it says. Yeah, ROF four. So a van hook hangers, spare tail included. Uh, can't find Fuck. out when it came out. Uh, it doesn't matter. It was w within the past three years, I want to say. Okay, fair enough. Um, sorry, Siri. Hey, Siri, go to sleep. <laughs> um, no feed podcast. Uh, <laughs> lurk. Um, lurk. 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 What's a lurk? I don't know. All right, then. Well, shit, man. Are you excited right. to, like, fucking throw these things in different parts of the country? I'm very excited. I'm, I think that we are still getting started with our swim bait game. I think we've both been throwing bigger swim baits for the past three, three or four years. Getting there. My first... My first big bait I got, I picked up in 2015. Okay, so you got me beat six years. I picked mine up in 2017. I bought was, an S waiver. It was a S waiver. <laughs> yeah, mine was an S waiver 168, I think. Also, the same, like around the same time, I bought the Savage Gear Duck. Thought I was cool, and yep. I picked up a pack of seven inch some hollow body swim bait and i thought i was like badass <laughs> and like well three quarter ounce swim bait heads with like a five or six hook 
and I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm big bait, and, you know, I'm throwing big bait. Uh, honestly, holy shit, just had this influx of memory. Uh, it all came from watching, oh, this is so lame. It all came from watching uh, one of Austin's, one of his first videos. He did, he had like 20 videos up at the time. Yeah. And it was talking about having big herring, herring, in these bodies of water. And, like, I haven't really seen it. Because he was talking about having seven to nine inch herring. Talking about hollow body boot tails. And this was, this was 2015. So it's like kind yeah. of earlier. Maybe he wasn't fully... Um, gliding around. Well, I don't think he was fully like putting it out there. I think he was definitely playing with more modern stuff. I think he was playing with the bullshad a lot at that time, just from me and him talking. Definitely the the HUD, uh, but he was more talking about bigger boot tails. Yeah. But I think that is mostly in part of having larger bait fish at that time. Which mm -hmm. we might not have in the past couple of years, which is yeah. which is kind of trendy, you know, as far Very. as it, these bodies of water. Like, you might have a good spawn, and a couple of years you have big bait fish, and then maybe they all that spawn dies out, and then you start back with smaller bait fish, and they work their way back up over time. I firmly believe that these bodies of water go through these trends. Yeah, they definitely change. So, so it's much. like that's where I first started throwing larger bait because yeah. I thought they were big bait and then the trout thing opened up and I was like fuck I can't go big enough yeah. <laughs> I can't go big enough I can't go trouty enough and it took until 2019 for that to work <laughs> the winter of 2019 yeah. you getting sleepy there big cheese a little sleepy all right well, that's all right man we've been rolling saying. for a good while man and it's it's yeah. it's late in the evening but it's it's been a good one and i mean there's endless amounts to talk about with these things like yeah we're definitely going to talk about these things I'm, more uh definitely let us know what you guys think of a more structured podcast kind of like this where we really just dove in to a certain topic uh, tonight's topic obviously was big baits, big herb baits. I'd say honestly, tonight's topic was swim baits, glide baits, glide baits. Yeah, like honestly, we didn't talk about much other than these single jointed deals. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So even more specific tonight, we were talking about glide baits, gliders, the glider, yeah, as Carl likes to say. Gliders. I love Carl. He's a good. One. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen. Leave a comment below. Let us know what you want to see, what we did right, what we did wrong. Smash that subscribe button. Oh, yeah. Please brush, hit that subscribe. Brush up against that like button real yeah. quick. Just get slide to the left and like. Uh, and hey, man. we finally, I think, right before we were about to click record for this podcast, I think we found our closer. And it is. Oh, yeah. we It's a cheerser. It's a cheerser. Um. Here's the podcast, podcast long, long cast, cast, and big, big bass. bass. Thanks, guys. Tune in next week. Below Average Angler, we're out.